Hi, today we're going to do a haunted house drawing. Here are three examples of different thumbnail sketches that show, oop, let me fix that number two, it was a little bit messy when I circled it, that show different options. Here's how I got there. Took my sketchbook and I started drawing house shapes, basically rectangles or squares with other shapes coming off of the edge. So I started with a main shape here, I made it a little bit crooked, a little bit rickety, and the lines were sort of on a diagonal, adding a flat roof here and um, some smaller flat roofs on the side. That's option one. Here is option two. I did a larger shape and added a pointed roof. The shape is sort of like a square, but it is smaller on the bottom. Then I added two small towers, and <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that bell ringing. I'm at school right now. On the other side, I drew another main structure with a flat roof, sort of like the first one, a little bit shorter, and some larger square-ish shapes on the side. These are not the only choices, they're just some suggestions. This one has an added tower on the top. Something like any of these would be a really good option to start your haunted house drawing. So flip your sketchbook over, get ready, get your page out, and set up your work area. You can hold your paper tall or wide, portrait or landscape, depending on how big and wide you want to make your house. If you would like to draw along with me, you can pause it as you go, or you can watch the video and get your ideas ready for afterwards. So I took a tall rectangle and two other lines on the side. I made them come in at the bottom a little bit, so they're sort of like a trapezoid. And I did that flat roof shape on both sides of the towers. And I went over and added my flat roof to the middle. It's a little crooked, but that's done on purpose so that it has a little bit more of what's called a style to the drawing. I hope you can see it all. I'll slide it down there for you. And I added a small tower to the top. Now I decided to make a double door so it looked like a kind of a creepy mansion. So I drew a larger square with a line down the center. Did a fancy doorknob that's sort of like two circles with a line in the middle and added semicircle windows to the door to give it the feel that is a little bit of a more of a detailed house than you probably are used to drawing with rectangular windows. I added a door frame for an extra detail because that is what an artist would do. They like to add lots of shapes. And I also repeated those shapes for the upper windows a little bit taller basically a big curve with a flat bottom. Now for my roof, I decided to do shingles and these sort of look like mermaid scales or fish scales or dragon scales. They do take a really long time. I put it in a time lapse here so you could see. It's a little bit of work, but it actually makes the house look so much better. So if you check out my house, it's starting to take shape. I decided to add on one side, an extra little area with a tower and a little point at the top and I just added some more texture there. You can kind of just make up your shapes. I added lines and then some more of those shingles. You don't have to do this, it's just an extra little detail. If you imagine this would be something that would have maybe like a weather vane on the top or something like that. So I start looking at my drawing and seeing where the details need to be added. On this side, I decided to make a cat standing on the roof. It's not a super detailed cat. I just sketched out the legs and then a curved line to make it look like the cat's back was arched. And I just took my pencil, kind of shaded in a pointing up tail, a little head. I didn't really do a face, it's kind of a silhouette and added some fur spikes on the back. So the cat is stretching and it is posing on top of that roof. The next detail I decided to add was some wooden planks or boards boarding up the windows to give the illusion that this house hasn't had anyone living in it in, it, uh, in, it in quite a while and there 
is a little ghost in this window. You can add your own spooky details to your home. On my other window, I did some more boards and they look pretty good. Kind of made them crossing and just a little bit unpredictable. They aren't lined up so perfectly straight. On this right tower, I decided to add a window with cracks in it. That one didn't have any boards to protect it. And somebody must have thrown a rock or something like that. Add a little frame here. And one more window over here. Try to make all your windows different just to give a little bit more detail and a little bit more story to your illustration that we're making. Oh, I was still thinking about what to add in that window when I decided to come over here and draw a tree. Now we learned about these trees in third grade and if you didn't have me in third grade, you essentially draw a stump that's wider at the bottom and then each part on the top splits into two sections and then it has a double line. So you split and double, split and double. It's a little tricky. Once you get the hang of it, you can draw some really awesome trees. These are trees with no leaves. Each line splits and then has a double line coming out and they slowly and gradually get smaller as they grow up towards the sun. Each branch gets thinner. You can make your tree as tall as you want. I'm just making one over here that is just going to be kind of a medium sized tree. It's about as tall as the house. On the bottom, I added a little extra detail of some creepy roots peeking out of the ground and my horizon line in the background where the sky meets the land. It's not always right at the bottom of the house. Over here, I think this part got cut off a little, but I added a zigzag that gets wider at the bottom. I think I'll slide my page up soon to show you. And just some lines to make it look kind of, there we go, like a brick or an old stone pathway. You can do stepping stones, you could do a different kind of path, it's up to you. Over here I added kind of a curved swirly bush. You could add a different plant or a planter or, you know, anything you can think of that would go kind of with the landscaping of the house. All right, over here, I finally decided what I'm going to do for my window, and I just did a cross lines. <laughs> it wasn't very, it wasn't very creative, but I decided I had enough detail in the rest of my house that kind of gives you a visual rest, and it's not too busy, not too much going on. Adding some grass, and I decided it would look really cool if there's a really big full moon in the sky that partially goes behind the roof. You could do a crescent moon, you could do any kind of moon if you want to make your picture at night. And I'm drawing a bat and I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. A little bat in front of the moon. You kind of do like a little cat head with a long oval body and then spiked wings that sort of look like the leaves that we did on our pumpkin drawing. And if you just keep it small, you can make it very simple. And I just shade it in with my pencil for now. And then I decided to do one more smaller bat next to it. You know, it's a little bit hard to see. Oh, I'm just still going over that bat. Here we go. So I do a little oval body, little pointy ears, and those spiky wings. These two bats are flying in front of the moon. There house is almost done. Over here on this side, there's like a really big area of yard. If you have something like this in your drawing, you could make it into kind of anything. I decided to put a couple tombstones, you know, maybe the house is next to a cemetery. It is a haunted house. You could make it a pumpkin patch. You could make it a vegetable garden with a scarecrow. There are so many options to make your drawing different. I added some grass. I didn't put any names on my tombstones. And then I did like one little, actually it would be big in this picture, <laughs> one big pumpkin. Just like the pumpkin we drew in art class last week. Over here, I drew a zigzag line with lines going down. Check this out, it's super easy. Little ovals on top. Do the same thing on the other side. 
sort of a rickety zigzag lines, ovals on the top of each line. Once you add one more line down the center, it becomes a rickety old wrought iron fence that looks really great and ties our whole drawing together. A few more sprigs of grass and, oh yeah, last minute I decided to add clouds. These are totally optional. I just kind of make one bump on the top and they come out to little points on the end. A lot of kids call these mustache clouds. If you make them larger at the top of the page and smaller as they go down towards the horizon line, it looks more realistic and shows more atmospheric perspective. That's just a fancy word for showing the sky or the weather. <laughs> there we are. Here's my haunted house. I didn't add color. I just wanted to make it a drawing, but you can color if you want. Can't wait to see yours!